Hey Blender Bob here. A few weeks ago we made a show called The End is Nigh and in it we had a planet, planet Earth. And I thought, well, that could be a cool tutorial to show. But then a few weeks ago also Blender Guru just came out with his own tutorial on doing a planet. So I thought, well, that's kind of weird if I do one and he just made one. Hmm. So I contacted him and I said, hey, listen, I wanted to do also a tutorial on a planet, but my method is a little bit different than yours. What do you think about it? And said, well, go for it. The, the more the merrier. So, all right. So I'm doing my tutorial on the planets, but here's the thing. They're very similar. I mean, a planet is a planet. The base is the same. The, the Earth itself, it's the same thing. The clouds, it's very similar. We take the maps from the same place. So this is what I suggest. You go see his tutorial if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, so you take a look at it, you go through it, you make it if you want to, and then you come back here and then I will do mine. Now you will see a lot of stuff is very similar. Like uh, the, the earth is the same thing. It's the same shader, the same setup for displacement. It's the exact same thing. I even use the same scale that he uses. So this way, if you want to start from his and modify it to do mine, then you can do it. It's no problem at all. Uh, for the clouds, the base is the same, but you will see there are some differences. But the atmosphere, completely different setup. All right, so let's go for it. So yesterday evening, it's about 10 something. I'm done with the editing of this clip. I'm, re I'm really happy with it. But then I want to talk about a problem that happens when you do something like this. The problem is when you subdivide a UV sphere, you get some pinching in the poles. And even before subdivision, you get some issues like you can see here on the edges of the polygons. And when you subdivide, you get this. It's even worse on the south pole. That's unusable. So I take my sphere here and I look at the UVs and this is what I get. And if I look at the other sphere here and I look at the UVs, well, obviously they're not going to match. So I thought, how can I fix that? Maybe if there was a way I could project the UVs from a UV sphere to an isosphere, that could fix the problem, maybe. Then I realized, hey, I'm a complete idiot. I don't need to project the UVs. I just need to project the textures. No! All I need to do is to use a spherical projection instead of a flat. But eh, it doesn't work. Well, let's see. I will just add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node and use generated into the vector and voila, it's done. No distortions, no stretching, no nothing. A sphere that doesn't have poles and have a perfect spherical mapping. So now I get a solution. It's super easy to do. It's 1030. I'm tired and I think, oh God, I don't want to redo the entire tutorial because now it's a different approach. So. Now, I'm not going to redo the entire tutorial. What I'm going to do is just tell you that when you see me do an, a, a UV sphere, just do an isosphere instead and uh, make it as a spherical projection and add the, um, the map node and the texture coordinate, just like I've just shown you. All right, because I, I don't feel like redoing the entire thing. Please excuse me. First, the planet itself. The first difference is that I parented my sunlight to a spherical empty because otherwise your light is inside the sphere and it's hard to select and also you cannot see the orientation. Of course, this will not affect in any way the final result. For the displacement map of the planet, if you don't see a lot of details, even if you check I am in experimental, I got my adaptive subdivision, I don't see the details, it looks all smooth out, just change the viewport level here. If I crank it up to 5, it's going to take a long time to refresh but I will see a much better result. Now this is only for the viewport viewing. When you're going to do the real render, you don't need to worry about this. It's going to be all fine. For the shader, my setup is a little bit different. I start with the same texture map. I also use a map range to invert it and I connect it into the roughness. So far, it's the same thing. For the color map, you can see that I added a curve node to change the intensity of the continents. I will explain why later. Then I created another principal shader right there. And the color here, the base color, if you take a look at it, it looks black, but it's not black. If we click on it and I crank up here the color, here the, the, the value, you can see it's actually orange, but it's very, very dark. It's not completely black, but it's almost black. I connected the same map into the roughness, but in between I put a curve so I can adjust the roughness. It does the same thing as if you were using a mid-max, but this one is more visual. Then I create a mixed shader node and I mix these two shaders together. And when I play with the factor, I can decide how much of one I want on the other one. And you see it creates this nice orange glow on the highlights. You can also see that if I put too much orange, I lose the continents. And that's why I have the curve node on the color, so I can adjust the luminance of the continents. 
So with this setup, you could get a very smooth and white specular like you have in this case. And with the orange tint. Now we're going to talk about the city lights. This is for the mask to make sure it's in the shadow. It's the same thing as Bender Guru. And here I made a little difference. So same texture. I added a curve here so I can modify the intensity of the lights. And you can see I got a multiply here. And what I'm multiplying is all the setup here. And all it does is to create a noise to break the highlights. If we take a closer look at the texture, you can see it's a lot of flat surfaces. So adding this noise will break these flat surfaces. One thing important here for the mask, Blender Guru was linking it to the light. I need to link it to my empty, not the sunlight, because my sunlight is not in the center of the world. So that's my shader for the planet. All right, let's move on to the clouds. This is Blender Guru shader. I didn't change anything on it. It's the exact same thing, but now we're going to modify it. If you look in this area, there are some clouds here, kind of transparent. They don't look very good. If I look directly at the image, you can see there are some gray areas like this. So I'm just going to add a curve node, and this way I'm going to be able to decide the intensity, the amount of clouds that I want in my scene. The next thing I want to do is to get rid of this line here on the edge. All these clouds on top of each other doesn't look very good. So I want to get rid of it. So I got this layer weight node here that I just set to 0.3 and it creates this nice gradient on the edge of the earth. And I connected the Fresnel into the factor of a color ramp. And this way I can decide the contrast, the amount I want to remove from my scene. Then I will take my curve that I had to decide the intensity here and I will connect it into this socket here and I will subtract it because I want to remove this part. So if I take a look at it before and after, so this is with and without, I now have a much nicer gradient on the edge. So this, the result of this will go into the factor here, right uh, there, and the shader, I will connect it back to the shader node and that's it. Now it's really nice here on the edge. The last step is to create a sunset in the clouds. So I used a texture coordinate connected to my sun master that goes into a normal, the same thing we did before for the night uh, part for the light city lights. There's a multiplier in it and a ramp. And when I connect this to the color, you magically see a nice sunset in the clouds. If I play with the multiplier, I will be able to decide how wide I want my sunset. So if I change it here, you can see it becomes much bigger. Now it covers the entire planet, so it's definitively too much. You can play with the ramp also to decide how much of the sunset you want in your clouds. Now, if you get a straight line, like let's say if I change this, well, this is too much, let's move it a little bit. If you get a straight line like you get right here, that's because the multiply is too high. So just reduce it and you will get a smooth gradient. The atmosphere. For the atmosphere, I use a totally different approach. So it's a mixed shader of a transparency and an emission shader. But when I zoom out, we can see that it covers the entire planet and we don't want that. So we just want the other half. So we're going to do the same thing we did for the night lights for the, the, the shader on the planet, on the, the Earth itself. So texture coordinate again using my Sun Master that I connect into a normal. So let's connect the normal directly into the factor to see what it does. So now I get half of the planet in the shade, which is what we want. But if we zoom in here, we can see that the edge is very, very sharp and we want a blurry edge. So remember what we just did for the clouds? Well, very similar. So let me go here, I get blurry edge. So I take a look here at my layer weight. I get this nice gradient. I use a color ramp to change the contrast. And then I connect this into a mix here. So now I get this gradient here. If I zoom in, you will see that the edge is not perfectly sharp and I can adjust it with this here. Not only can I control the blur of the edges, but I can also control the density of the entire atmosphere. So this is multiplied to the previous nodes and I will connect this into an RGB curve. I like to use curves because it gives me a lot of control. Then I will connect it into the factor and now I get my blurry edge. And now you just play with the RGB curve to get the density that you want for your atmosphere. Now we're going to do something funky that I haven't seen in any other planet tutorials. This is a real picture from space and you can see that over the cities when it's cloudy, the clouds get illuminated. Let me show you the concept first. So I got a plane. This is my earth. And just like the shader we did before, this is the map for the highlights for the, the city lights. And I just plugged them into the emission. Now I created a curve node. This is to adjust the color to give it a little bit of yellow tint. So I reduced the blue and I added more red and more green. Then I have another plane on top that I called clouds. 
same shader that we did on the earth we don't see them because we're in the shade so if i create for example a sunlight then we are going to see all the clouds popping up but we're supposed to be in the shade so i will take it out okay now what i want is the city lights to reflect on the clouds it doesn't work if you go under it you can see that it does light because it's an emission shader but only from beneath the cloud you can see it not from the top so i'm going to cheat it what i'm going to do is to create another plane on top and i'm going to call it cloud lights for this one i use a city lights but i blurred it first in photoshop and i will use a curve node to give it a bluish tint so we can better see what's going on if i turn back on my two other layers the clouds and the earth well we don't see anything because this one is covering everything so what I want to do is to turn the ray visibility off for the camera. So now it still emits light, but it's not visible to the camera. So it does something. The problem is it also lights the ground and we don't want this. We only want to light the clouds. You can clearly see it if I turn off the cloud layer. You can see the ground is getting illuminated and we don't want that. So how can we just light the clouds and not the ground? We don't have light linking, so we need to find another way to do it. And this is the way. Using a light path mode, there's an output here for ray length. That's the distance, how long the ray is. And we're gonna plug it into a math node. We're gonna put it in less than. And this is the value to decide how long we want the ray to be. Then we have a math node for multiply. This is to adjust the intensity. And we're gonna plug this into the strength of the emission. And now it's working. I can only see the light affecting the clouds. So if I go more on a side view here, you can see it lights the clouds, but doesn't touch the ground. And if I make the threshold higher, well, suddenly I hit the ground. And then I can reduce it until it only affects the clouds. It's easier to visualize with a cylinder instead. So I got my plane here. If I shade it, you will see the light that goes all the way there. And if I play with my less than here you can see i can control how far i want the light to go and the multiplier will change the intensity you can clearly see the effect if i move the cloud plane see it only lights the clouds it's pretty cool one thing very important you want your cloud light layer to be parented to the earth so this way if you rotate the earth the cloud lights will be perfectly aligned with the earth obviously i don't want blue lights so i will just adjust my curves to get the result that i'm looking for same color as the lights and now i get my blurry clouds lit under the big cities so if i want to do this on my planet it's the same thing here the exact same setup here connected into the two math nodes here and i will have my blurred texture into the rgb curve connect this into an emission shader now if i connect this directly into the material output it's not going to work it's going to work only in the shade here but it's going to cover all my clouds so i need to do the same setup as i did before so i get a transparent shader that i'm going to mix with all this setup that we had before to show only in the shade and then i'm going to connect this into my surface here and parado i got illuminated clouds let's take a look around oh that looks pretty cool here yeah, look at this. This is really, really nice. Also, you can see sometimes on real pictures that there's a little green line that goes around in the atmosphere. I'm no astrophysicist, but it's probably related to the Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights. But it's not important. What's important is, can we do this? Of course, we can do it. It's the same setup as the atmosphere. I'm just going to duplicate the atmosphere. Then I'm going to change the scale. I'm going to click on the little number here to make sure I get a copy of the shader. I will rename it uh, Atmos Green because it's green. Then I will, of course, make it green and adjust the curves, adjust all these settings here in the color ramp. And I end up with a very tiny green line. And you can also adjust it by changing the intensity of the colors in the color ramp. So, for example, I take the white here, I can select it and make it a little bit darker. And it's going to affect the intensity of the green line. Okay, let's do the final touches. We can give it some love in compositing. So I got my image here. And the first thing I did was to add a gamma node just to give it a little bit more contrast. So here the gamma, you can see the difference. And now I added a hue saturation just to give it a little bit more in the value to make the clouds more bright. I did a lens distortion. You can see here the difference it does in the corners. It creates a lens chromatic aberration. And even if modern lenses don't have chromatic aberration, we still add it in CG because it breaks the CG look. I got a lens flare here. It's a real footage from a lens flare. I scaled it down because it was a 4K footage. Because it's a clip I downloaded from YouTube, you get a lot of bending. We'll see later what we can do about this, but if I was in production, I would actually buy the footage. 
So after this, a little gamma to make it a little bit more contrasty. Same thing again here, use saturation to change the colors a little bit, and then I can add them together, and this is the result, with unfortunately the bending on top here. So I did similar things for the other images. Adding the lens flare changes the image a lot. It makes them much nicer. If you do your compositing in Fusion or in Resolve, you can fix the bending. So here I will reduce the lift so we can see it better. Now we have a very, very nasty bending here. And all you have to do is to take the D-band effect and drag it on the node. You need the P version to do this. And you can see it removed most of the bending here. Now the lift was very low, so that's why we see it. But if I put it back to the way it's supposed to be, you can see it pretty much removed all the bending. I can tell you that it's pretty much impossible to make a setup for a planet that will look good from every angle in every kind of light situation. It's not gonna work, okay? You always need to tweak it on a per shot basis. So there you have it. Now you have two methods to do planets. Both have advantages and disadvantages. You just pick the one that fits your needs. All right. Okay. Bye.